Recently, I've been exploring different ways to achieve in-camera effects in post. And with the powerhouse of DaVinci Resolve Studio, I've actually found a great way to be able to achieve a ProMist effect in post after the fact. But before we look into how to do it, for those of you that don't know what a mist or diffusion filter is, let me explain. According to Tiffin on their website, a diffusion filter, which is what this mist filter is, lifts the contrast of the image or creates halation around specular sources of light in the image, thus making it a little bit softer. It can also help soften up skin tones. I've actually got a 10% uh, Cinebloom filter on right now. I like using the Cinebloom filter for a lot of my videos because in my opinion, it helps soften the digital image that comes out of the Sony a7C. And I, I, I just think it does a great job. Now, whilst I don't have a Pro Mist or Black Mist or anything like that, this Cinebloom filter is still a diffusion filter and it still does the same job. So using this as an example, I'll show you some before and after, both without the Cinebloom, with the Cinebloom, and then with the glow effect and show you how I got it. So as you can see, I have got a few clips here. I've got a clip without the Cinebloom. I've got a clip with the Cinebloom. I've got a couple of clips of me without the Cinebloom, a clip of me with the Cinebloom, and then we've got our glow and our Cinebloom, but I'll get into that in just a minute. So to achieve this in DaVinci Resolve, it's actually very, very simple. So this is a shot without the Cinebloom on it. To compare, here is a shot with the Cinebloom on it. Now, you can quite clearly see the halation on the highlights there. Um, it massively softens the image even just at 10% and as you can see this is quite a clean image so sorry that's my phone so if you want to add the glow to this you've got to add the glow so we're going to go in this color tab and we're going to go to our library of effects and we're going to search for glow now what you're going to do is you're going to drag that glow onto that image and you'll see immediately that the default settings give you that halation uh, that, that we're talking about now by playing around with things like the shine threshold, which as you go lower, obviously it, you're basically drawing a line across like where your highlights are and you're drawing a line further down uh, all the way into the mid-tones. And obviously as you drag it up, you know, you're just reducing that threshold. Uh, and then your spread is very, very self-explanatory. You increase it and it increases the spread of that halation in there. You can also add a color filter if you want to. So anywhere that it's affecting the light, you can literally add more colors, which is great. Oh, you can't see the color filter, but that's fine. Um, so I'm going to just reset this gray and we'll go and have a look at the one that I did earlier, which is this one. So this has a glow added in post. If I turn it off, you can see that it softens everything up. It creates that spread, that halation, and also I've made it so it's a little bit warmer as well, just because without adding the warmth in there, it still looks a little bit cold, despite all the camera settings being exactly the same. Now to compare that with the Cinebloom one, you will notice that the Cinebloom is obviously way more convincing, and I'm not saying that doing it in post is gonna fix that, especially not with such a basic workflow here, but there's the Cinebloom, like it just looks so, so good. Um, in comparison to this, you know, like it looks absolutely mad. So this is a shot of me with the Cinebloom. So if you look here, you can see just how kind of soft all this light is. And then if we cut to this one, you can see obviously it's way, way sharper, uh, much, much harsher as well. So what we can do is we can add this glow onto here. You immediately see it light up the window there. And then if we reduce that threshold down, increase the spread. And then what I also like to do on stuff like this is just change the blend. So you're only adding it in, you know, up to maybe 50%. Otherwise I think it can look a bit too much. There you go. So now you can see it just adds that little bit of softness. There's no color on there whatsoever. And that's literally as simple as it is. Now, like I said, this is such a quick and easy way for you to add some kind of diffusion filter into your, uh, into your shots regardless of if you have access to something like a Cinebloom filter or a mist filter. I'll be honest, like the filters aren't that expensive, but the convenience of being able to do it in post sometimes has its benefits. I'm a big fan of baking stuff into the camera because I think uh, physical most of the time looks better, especially in this instance, you've seen the examples. But I think 
like a lot of the time having that flexibility can be handy if you're not 100% sure on the look that you want. Also with this glow effect you can really push it and you can get some like really dreamy vibes with this, some proper stylized shots. So it does have another purpose there as well. In my opinion though, this isn't as good as having a Promus filter, however, it gets you a bit of the way if you're looking to take some of that digital edge off. I've been using it in a couple of my reels recently and I've also used it in a couple of the shots in a couple of my recent like full length videos as well and you know it's on some like the woodland shots and stuff like that where I haven't had the cinema bloom with me and I personally think that it's you know made all the difference it's softened everything up really nicely. That is it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope this was a nice quick tutorial for you. Don't forget to like, comment, get subscribed and like the bell to stay up to date for whenever I release a new video. And until the next one, see ya.